Happy holidays, everybody. This is Lex here at Board at Work, and we're going to be taking a review of the Lee Echo Lay S3. Probably butchered the naming, but this is a, another device added to the growing market of mid range, pretty decently spec Android devices, um, and is definitely great for the consumer out there as it gives you more bang for your buck. Overall, it's a very high quality looking device. As you can see, it looks pretty decent, very similar to the OnePlus One. Um, series if anything they kind of just drip the design basic specs include a 1080p HD display 16 megapixel camera on the back pretty decent photos as you'll see during the review a front fixing 8 megapixel camera which is also decent for the price you have a fingerprint scanner that is on the back coming from an iPhone it was kind of weird to get adjusted to but it actually worked fairly well over my use of the device and a Snapdragon 625 processor Inside the box, Lieco does provide a pretty premium feel packaging process here, very similar to iPhone in terms of quality of build. Uh, and they also include bang for your buck items, uh, which is really surprising. I think Lieco is trying to push that brand. You do get a quick charge 3.0 wall adapter as it is a Snapdragon uh, 625 processor. Fairly decent charging speeds. Everyone that's used quick charging, pretty happy with it. It does accept USB Type-C as well, since it is quick charge. So that's also fairly, uh, fairly nice to have in the packaging. And it's pretty long, which is also nice. Spec Junkies might be a little bit upset here. It is dual SIM, which is nice, but everyone doesn't travel the world. It does not have expandable storage. It is the standard 32 gigabyte model, and that's it. So 32 gigabytes should be sufficient for most people. Moving along to the software of the Leiko Lay S3. You're gonna get a launcher. Everyone pretty much knows it at this price. They wanna pump you full of their bloatware. But for being bloatware, I must say it's really fluid and seamless. Lieco is really pushing the brand here. They have huge services over in China. Um, Lieco is actually pretty big worldwide and they're trying to push their content to you by subsidizing the price of the device and giving you content and membership offers inside the device to kind of make up for their losses. Now. It's not a bad app, but it's just a glorified YouTube, and I just rather use YouTube because that's kind of what we do here, guys. Um, but it is not bad. I would say if you prefer to use their services that they offer, you wouldn't be disappointed. Um, but there is a lot of try this now for full buy later content, but it, it does work. The only problem is I do think it bogs down the device doing certain tasks. Now, Lieco does their multitasking a bit different in their software, and this is baked in, so you cannot change this with a launcher, but they incorporate the toggle buttons along with a task manager for your open apps. At first, I was like, what the hell is going on? But over time, I got used to it. It's fairly in ingenious in a way because it makes, a very it makes the notification bar very, very clean uh, when you're looking at your text message and all that, so you're not worried with toggling or anything along those lines. That's reserved only for multitasking button, and then you have notifications in a completely separate section of the OS. So I, I did come to get used to it, and it wasn't a problem at all. The time has come to make this phone great again, so you know I had to download the Google Now launcher and install it. Now, that's one of the beautiful things about Android. You can kind of make it the way you want to, but I actually like the way Google does it. So I installed the launcher, and I'm good to go on this, and that pretty much moves us to the next section of our video, and, and that's pretty much the bloatware apps. Now, those are separated from the main launcher. Uh, now, I haven't tried to delete them, but they're actually a cool service to have if you want to use them, so I just kept them there. But most likely, you can't since Leico made this device. They want you to use their services. But other than that, there's not too much other bloatware uh, than that. What I'm doing for you folks in the video now is using the device general day-to-day -day use, how fluid it is, how seamless the speeds are, if there's any hiccups. This is a Snapdragon 652 processor. My apologies about saying 625 processors before. It is a 652 processor. But other than that mistake, there's no mistake using it for this device. It's really, really fluid. Battery life, which you'll see later in the review, does incorporate well with this quad uh, core processor. I really never had any major problems when using this device. The only problem came when I used Leiko's apps, um, and that was when I was trying to multitask. S3 surprisingly has pretty good speaker output for being a mid-range device price at this. Now, it's not anything crazy. You're not getting, you know, dual surround sound, things along those lines, but it does have a decent bottom speaker. And I do believe that the front facing speaker up here does output sound. I may confirm that, but I do believe it's true. So I'm gonna give you a sampling of the sound. Just gonna unlock this here and use uh, one of my favorite shows on TV right now, Dragon Ball Super, last episode was a classic. I'm gonna pretty much show you this. 
子を集めとけ仕込みするならこっちの勝ちだいやみんなお前らの反則負けだなんはお前だろ僕は知性の塊だちょっとかな暴力好きの破壊者それはお前だろお前だI just gotta say, guys, Dragon Ball Super is life. It really is truly life. The camera on the Lei S3 is actually pretty decent. There is a, again, a 16 megapixel camera on the back. This isn't gonna blow any minds. Again, this is still a mid range device, but being 16 megapixels with a pretty decent sensor, I'm quite satisfied with the results. Going into the app here, you see the quality is not bad at all. This is, a, again, a 1080p HD display, not too shabby. Taking pictures pretty easy. Pretty, pretty swift. I mean, there's kind of a shutter lag, but not too bad. But bare minimum um, options here. It's very similar to the iPhone. If you look at the bottom, you slide from left to right to switch from your slow-mo, video, photo, and pano. If you click this here, going back, you get different filters. So pretty bare bones, but for utilitarian uses, it, it's really good. I mean, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, we can take another photo here. Then going into the photo app at the bottom, access let's see here not too bad zooming in quality isn't bad we'll have still photos and you know on the website if you guys want to check them out but overall it is really uh decent for what it or what you pay for really the fingerprint scanner on the back of the s3 is uh wishwashy uh at best 90% of the time it works. It's actually pretty nice having it on the back. Now I'm coming from an iPhone, so I'm quite biased, but I do naturally prefer my fingerprint scanners to be on the front. But using this device, since it is bigger, I do have a wider grip regardless, and my finger kind of just lays on the back there, and it unlocks pretty swiftly. Now this is with the Google Now Home Launcher. It's even faster, a bit faster with the stock, uh, as you would assume so. But overall, it's I'm, I'm okay with it. It's, it's something that they could probably update with a software um, upgrade. If uh, that's the case, I don't think it's the sensor itself. It's just that the fact that it doesn't really recognize it well over time. Pumped inside this bad boy is a 3000 milliamp hour battery pack. For it being mid-range, this is more than adequate. It also being a 5.5 inch display, 1080p HD resolution, that incorporates well with day-to-day -day use. In my case, I usually got about a day and a half to two days, no problem. And even if you don't get that full two days, it being quick charge 3.0, you can re-up pretty fast on the go. Let's say you need to brush your teeth or you need to take a shower. In that small bit of time frame, you can extend the battery life to full two days if necessary. So overall, battery life is not an issue with the Lieco S3. Summarizing my take on the Lieco Lay S3 is a fairly decent device for a decent price. Being priced at $249.99, you get fairly decent specs for that price range. Now, Lieco had a crazy deal during Black Friday when they first announced the device for about $149.99. Now you're not gonna get that, but if you buy it now, so I believe January of next year, you do get Direct TV now for three months, which is pretty great, that's a pretty decent trial. Um, now my take on it, decent camera, decent display at 1080p HD, four and three pixels per inch, is nothing to scoff at, fingerprint scanner, Snapdragon 652 processor, you have a decent device. Now, if you could spend a little bit more money, I would check out the other arena because there are plenty of mid-range Android devices out there with high specs. But if you like this price range, go for it, guys. Remember to press that subscribe button and that share button if you have it. Comment in the section below as well with your ideas on the device. And as always, remember to always enjoy your entertainment. Thanks, folks.